This mini PC has dual NICs. It can support up to four displays. And just because it's small doesn't mean it's slow because it has a fast AMD Ryzen processor. A little mini PC with tons of connectivity and some cool features inside. Yeah, I think it's definitely time to get to our review. So well, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the ASRock Industrial Box 4x4 7800 UPC. Now that 7840U should give you a big clue on what's going on here. Inside we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7840U series processor. And that fast processor joins a platform that ASRock Industrial has been using for years. Now ASRock Industrial has both the like, you know, fanless units as well as these fanned units. And this is one of the fanned units and we're gonna show you that and all that kind of stuff inside. But I just wanna point out that this is a pretty darn cool little box. In fact, we just reviewed an Intel based Nook from Simply Nook. And just to kind of give you some idea, we'll do a little B-roll so you can see a little bit better, but this is actually a little bit smaller than the Intel Core i9 Simply Nook that we just looked at. And in terms of features, I don't know that you give up so much compared to that Nook. Now, of course, I wanna say thank you to ASRock Industrial for sending this unit. It's the first one they've actually ever sent us, but also the STH YouTube members because we had to go buy all the stuff that goes in this unit. So thank you to all the STH YouTube members that are supporting STH by subscribing down below. We really appreciate it if you can do that. But hey, with that, let's get to the hardware and see exactly what we did with this unit. Okay, so let's talk about the front of the unit first. And on the front, you'll see that we have a type A port. Now this is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and that's kind of part of our connectivity on the front, but there's a lot more because we get two USB 4 ports. Now, these USB 4 ports are super useful because if you wanna do something like, I don't know, hook up an old Thunderbolt 3 device or something like that, you can do that with AMD's implementation of the USB 4. And the other thing you can do is you can use these as display outputs. So if you have the USB Type-C to DisplayPort cable, you can use both of these as outputs, giving us our first two video outputs on the system. On the front, we also get a combo headset jack, which is always useful in a little mini PC like this. And then you're gonna see that we don't get a power button. Instead, the power button is on the top of the system. One thing that you'll notice is that we do have a nice little gash on this. And the reason for that is I dropped it as we were getting to our new kind of like photo setup. But even though that was my fault, I'm also not a huge fan of this glossy fingerprint magnet and uh, scratch magnet just kind of finish. I'd rather just have a matte finish. I just think it would probably be better for a lot of folks, including me, especially if you're clumsy. Okay, now just kind of looking around the system real quick. I I'm on the top of this, this is a solid top. There's no ventilation or anything like that on top of this. Instead, your vents are basically on either side of the system, but there aren't really many other features on the side. Instead, all of the rest of the ports are on the back of the system. We start with our power input, which is a DC 19 volt, which is pretty common in these mini PCs. We then get two USB type A ports, but these are USB 2 ports. So they're more for things like keyboards and mice and stuff like that, rather than being for high speed IO. That also means that the only real high speed USB ports that we have are on the front where we have two USB 4 and one USB 3 port. But other than that, the, the rest of them are still USB 2. So it's kind of a bummer that we don't have a couple more high speed ports here. Next, we have two HDMI ports. So if you're hooking up to a TV, it's super easy to just go and hook these things up to like two different TVs. And these two HDMI ports combined with the two display port alt mode USB type C ports on the front. That gives us our total of four displays out of the system. And then we get to the networking on the back. And I don't know how I feel about this guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So this system has two different ports. It has one port, which is a one gigabit Realtek port. It has another one, which is a two and a half gig Realtek port. Now, I think the reason that they do this is that the one gig Realtek NIC is used for AMD Dash, which is the kind of manageability thing, kind of like an Intel vPro, but they don't really like it as much as vPro. I think vPro is a little bit better, but, but AMD does have Dash. And I think that's why they need the Realtek one gig ethernet port here. But then there's the two and a half gig, which is a higher speed port. So I, I don't know how I feel. I wish that you could just have two, two and a half gig ports on here because I don't know why. I just, I just think that would be better. Again, love to hear your thoughts. One other small feature is that you get a Kensington lock port in case you put this in a place where people are likely to pilfer it. But as great as all these ports are, we need to get inside the system to see how it works. 
So getting inside the system, let me just show you this real quick. These screws are like really long and uh, they take a, quite a while to actually get out. And the other thing is that, although I really like the fact that they are recessed in these rubber feet, there's no like captive function. So usually you'd have like a little lock right here. So that way you can't like, you know, yank these things out. So if I were to tip this over, all four of these screws would just go all over. I know this because we now have a giant 2,400 square foot studio. And um, well, you know, we lost one of these things. I had to go search for it. One little feature that this lid has though, is you're gonna see that there is a cable which provides SATA power and also data to a two and a half inch drive that if you wanted to put it there, you could. I would frankly recommend against it because I don't really think that there's enough cooling to be able to handle a two and a half inch drive and plus like everything else that's in here. Okay, so inside the system, we get two DDR5 SO DIMM slots and something that we tried because, uh, well, the DDR5 5600 DIMMs took a little bit longer to get here. You know, we tried the DDR5 5200 ones all from Crucial, right? We tried these things and they didn't work at first. So then we put in DDR5 4800 SO DIMMs and those worked without issue. We also eventually got the DDR5 5600 SO DIMMs and uh, when they finally arrived, those worked in the system. So I'm not really sure why we have DDR5 SO DIMMs from Crucial, all three, you know, all memory modules from the same vendor and all that kind of stuff, but one of them just didn't work in the system. We kept reseeding them and just nothing managed to get those DDR5 DIMMs to work. So I, I don't really know why they didn't work in here, but they have worked in other systems. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is just the SSD situation. We are using uh, you know two terabyte SSD in here. I think a lot of folks might also use a four terabyte drive, just kind of seeing the prices fall on those recently. The one tip though, especially if you're gonna try putting a four terabyte drive in here, is just the fact that this does not have the most room for like a double-sided SSD, right? So you really, I, I just personally would prefer a single-sided M.2 SSD. I was kind of surprised by this, just given the level of airflow or lack of airflow that you have on the bottom of the system, but we've been using a Samsung 9900 Pro two terabyte, and it's actually worked in the system for a while now. So I, I guess I can re recommend it, but I would probably go with a lower power SSD if you can. Now the Wi-Fi in this is a MediaTek RZ616, which is a Wi-Fi 6C solution, has Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff. So technically, this this system has a one gig NIC, a two and a half gig NIC, as well as Wi-Fi 6E, making three network connections that you can use without even having to go to something like a USB dongle. Okay, now of course, the star of the show is the AMD Ryzen 7. 7840U. Now this is an eight core, 16 thread processor. Now the fact that this is one of AMD's newer APUs means that we get a couple of things that are beyond just the core count, right? First, we get the AMD Radeon 780M graphics, which is one of the new RDNA 3 graphics series. We've already looked at this a bunch and you can actually play, you know, some like esports titles and stuff like that. So it's okay for like kind of that kind of lower end gaming. Of course, if you want to go play like AAA titles at 4K resolution or, you know, like want to be competitive at things like Counter-Strike or something like that, you're probably going to want to go and get a discrete GPU system, but still just for just general playing, this thing actually works okay. The other one though, that I think we're going to start hearing about a lot more like next year is the fact that this processor is one of the first ones from AMD that has the AMD AI engines. And what you're going to start to see, especially with like Windows 12 in 2024 and stuff like that, is you're going to start to see more and more Microsoft focus on providing things like AI features. And this little processor already has like, I think like a 10 T ops, like AI engine in it, which of course we're going to start to see more like, you know, 30, 40 T ops versions coming out in the future, but at least this has something. We're going to start to see a lot more AI infused Microsoft and also desktop products in the future. So it is kind of nice that we have that. However, at the same time, there aren't that many applications that are going to use that today. Most things are still going to use the RDNA three graphics engine. But of course I always want to talk about the CPU performance. So we'll, let's get to that. Okay, so this AMD Ryzen 7 7840U is a Zen 4 based processor, which means that it's actually from the same generation that you see a lot of like the Ryzen 7800s out there, 7900s, all that kind of stuff, but also things on the server side, like the AMD Epic Genoa, Genoa X CPUs and stuff like that. So this is a very modern, at least for today, processor that's in the system. On the other hand, unlike in many desktop platforms, you don't get something like, you know, 95 or over hundred Watts to go play with. You get something that's a lot more constrained just due to thermal constraints in a system like this. So overall, we're seeing performance that is competitive with a lot of 
of other 8-core Zen 4 systems that we've seen previously, of course, with the caveat that we do have a little bit of a power limitation. We also see performance pretty much in line with what you would see on the Intel side. I just, you know, frankly, and, and just kind of want to, you know, take a step back from these benchmarks for a second here, right, guys? Like, if you have either an Intel or AMD CPU and you're just doing things like Microsoft Excel and, like, you know, making PowerPoint presentations using Chrome and all that kind of stuff, frankly, you're not going to see a huge difference between Intel or AMD at this point. They're pretty darn close. I think the biggest difference, for me at least, is on the GPU or integrated GPU side. Still, if you compare this to a lot of older processors, this thing is darn fast. But let's talk about the power consumption real quick. Okay, now at idle, this thing was actually pretty darn good. The idle power consumption was generally jumping around from maybe about six and a half watts to about 10 watts, which is perfectly reasonable for a system like this. The other thing I wanna note just real quick here is that when we set this whole thing up in the new studio, one thing that we did was we got this new decibel meter and uh, we did we used it for a bunch of these until we realized that the 30 or 43.8 decibel floor that it provided was not really useful because that's apparently as low as that thing can actually go. And then we tested it with a couple other decibel meters and we found out later that the uh, the noise floor is lower on the system. So we don't have a great idle noise for you, but we can let you hear it. And let me just let you hear it right now. And I can just tell you that it is pretty darn quiet when it's running. Okay, now blasting this thing, of course, we can see a lot higher power consumption. And then we're going to see that the power is going to decrease to a kind of more manageable long-term number. Now, we have seen systems, especially AMD Ryzen systems, that are more than happy to go sit up at like, you know, 90 watts or something like that, just nonstop. But frankly, that is not this box. And I'm going to just let you hear what, you know, you can hear if you're just sitting here and you're listening. You know, here, here's what it sounds like at its kind of, you know, when it's running at 100%. So you can definitely hear this thing. And to me, with all these mini PCs, I wish that they were just slightly larger but they had better cooling for even quieter operation. My just kind of thought is that this four x four and this kind of nook type size was something that was made years ago when CPUs just didn't use as much power. And nowadays CPUs just in general will use more power. And I wish that the form factor evolved to allow them to have just better cooling so it could be quieter. Although Azerac Rack does, definitely does have a decent cooler here. With that, let's get to our key lessons learned. Okay, with all these mini PCs, I always like to have a key lessons learned section. Let's just talk about the price for a sec. So this one I'm looking at right now, uh, it is on Newegg. And I think this this box is about $599 for a bare bones. Now there are some holiday specials because I'm looking at it right now and it's about $30 off, so about $569 or so. And of course, with all these mini PCs, pricing changes over time. Still, just something I want to point out is that from a performance perspective, this was actually fairly competitive with the Simply Nook Onyx V9 that we just reviewed with the Intel Core i9-13900H. And depending on who you are and like what your preferences are, you might actually like the port configuration of this a little bit better. Now, the Onyx V9, that came with a 8 gigabyte stick of memory as well as a 256 gig SSD at 999. And frankly, if it was 999 for that or a bare bones for 599, I would take this bare bones any day at that pricing level. And let me explain why. For around $100, you can go get a you know, 32 gigabytes, so two 16 gigs of memory and put that in here. You can also easily get a two terabyte SSD these days for that, you know, $100. So, so you know, for $200, you can get two terabytes, 32 gigabytes of memory. You can have more storage than a lot of the mini PCs that are from like no name brands and stuff like that. And that's not too bad at about $799 or a little less with discounts. And oh, by the way, that means that we're still $200 less than the Simply Nook unit. So I kind of feel like from a value perspective, this thing is pretty darn good. I also know that there are folks that, that are gonna say like, hey, you know, you can get a B-Link unit or a Minis Forms or something like that. We've reviewed many of those systems previously and you can, but of course, Azrock is just a bigger, better well-known company and all that kind of stuff. And you might have a chance to get support with ASRock where you really, really don't get that with uh, some of the other vendors out there. But on the hardware side, I want to give a key lesson learned as well. I frankly do not like the fact that we have a one gig and a two and a half gig. I think they should both be two and a half gig. And that would make this thing absolutely awesome if that were the case. And the other thing is just the port configuration on the USB ports, because let me just kind of give you an idea. If you were to use this thing as a, you know, four display output monster, right? And you had a display 
display port to you know USB C to display port cable on this one, that one, and then you had two HDMI you know monitors are coming out the back or something like that. So you're using all those plates. Well, that means that you only have one Type A port, which is a USB 3 port on the front, and then two Type A USB 2 ports on the back, which is just frankly not that much. I just wish that there was like maybe another port or two. It just would kind of make me sleep better at night, I guess. And hey, while we're on the subject of having wishlist items, well, why can't I have an SD card slot that goes in a side or something like that? That would be super useful too, because I think that would make people that do photography, that take videos and like, you know, actually edit them and stuff like that. I think that would make this a lot more useful. Still, I have to say, I really like the fact that this unit does have a lot of features that I would normally look for. It has multiple NICs in it as well as Wi-Fi. It also has USB 4, which I really like, especially on these little AMD mini PCs. I like the AMD Radeon 780M graphics because you can go play esports titles at decent resolutions and decent frame rates, and it's actually kind of a nice experience. Overall though, I think this is a great little unit, especially if you're into these little mini PCs. And of course, we're gonna keep doing these as well as many fanless PCs into the new year on the STH YouTube channel. So if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.